welcome back to edifo here in this video i am going to demonstrate another non parametric test called case test kolmogoro smirnov test this test has two variances one sample case test and a two sample case test in this video i am going to depict one sample case test it is a very popular non parametric test for testing the goodness of it or you can test the normality of data if your sample size is comparatively small this test is very powerful than chi square test for demonstrating this case test let us take an example of customer service quality survey here is the example customer service is one of the core components of any organization without excellent customer service it is impossible to stay in today's competitive commercial space it is also a fundamental part of the goodwill of the organization here a bank decided to organize a survey to find out customers perceptions about their customer service quality their purpose is to find out whether everyone has the same or different opinion about their customer service quality now we can move to our case test this test is introduced by two eminent russian mathematicians a n kolmogorov and n v smirnov this test first of all introduced by a n kolmogorov in 1933 and later it is improved by N V Smirnov in 1939 it is a non parametric test as we know there are two types of statistical tests for hypothesis they are parametric and non parametric test in a parametric test you need to follow a normal distribution before conducting a parametric test you make sure that your data is normally distributed but in the case of non parametric test it doesn't require that your data follow the normal distribution so it is called a distribution free test so parametric test follows a normal distribution and non parametric test follow a distribution free pattern it is used to test the goodness of fit normally we have two data that is sample data and normally distributed data that is theoretical data and the data that we have collected through our questionnaire that is our sample data and how well this sample data fit a distribution from a population with a normal distribution and it is a set of check that means the goodness of it is a test to check whether the data collected is fit to the model or not it is a prime check that the researcher needs to accomplish a goodness of fit test in general refers to measuring how well do the observed data correspond to the fitted model that is our assumed model goodness of fit testing is an important element of any analysis the goodness of fit test is a statistical hypothesis test to see how well the sample data fit a distribution from a population with a normal distribution the next important thing is that this test is commonly used to test the normality here you can see a normal distribution that means the left side of mean and right side of mean equally divided that is the distribution left side the mean and the distribution right side the mean is you can see in an equal pattern this distribution is called a normal distribution the data that you are collected through your questionnaire from a sample may not be normally distributed so if you want to check whether it is normally distributed or not you can use case test instead of that if you want to test the data using a parametric test first of all you have to check whether the data is normally distributed or not so you determine if a data set is well modeled by a normal distribution so case test is commonly used to check whether the data is normally distributed or not an assessment of the normality of data 
is a prerequisite for many statistical tests because a normal data is an underlying assumption of all parametric test many parametric tests requires normally distributed variables determine whether a sample comes from normally distributed population or not there are two main methods of assessing normality the graphical method and numerical method we can say statistical method normality test is used to determine if a data is well modeled by a normal distribution the next thing is that this test is used to prove null hypothesis we know there are two types of hypothesis null and alternative in null hypothesis there is no difference between observed and expected but in alternative we can say there is a difference between observed and expected if you want to know more about the hypothesis here i am give a link below in the description you just go through that link you can get how we can define a hypothesis for your research process next is the requirements for case test the first requirement is that the data should be continuous in nature there are two types of data in statistics they are continuous and discrete a continuous data means it's infinite number of possible values within a selected range for example age height temperature etc suppose a sports department in a college are plan to select players for their basketball team and the criteria is that the weight of the players should be between 75 and 90 kilograms the weight of the players would be an example of continuous variable because the number of possible values within a selected range that should be within 75 and 90 kilograms in the case of discrete variable the finite number of possible values suppose we flip a coin and count the number of heads the number of heads could be any integer value between 0 and plus infinity we can't see a 2.5 heads it is not possible that's why discrete variables are finite numbers of possible values for example days of a week or coin flips etc so here the data should be in continuous nature the next requirement is that the variables that are tested at least on an ordinal scale as we know there are four types of scales of measurement nominal ordinal interval and ratio here your data should be in at least ordinal form in chi square test we are collected the data in nominal form but here you should be collected the data at least in ordinal form or you can collect the data in interval or in ratio but one condition that should be at least on an ordinal scale for collecting the data we need to prepare a questionnaire for our example here is our questionnaire only one question in our questionnaire the question is like this specify the quality of our customer service i am developing this question in five scale the scales are very low low moderate high and very high now we need to specify our hypothesis for testing here is the null and alternative hypothesis first the null hypothesis here is the null hypothesis there is no difference in the proportion of respondents perception about the customer service quality the second is the alternative hypothesis here is the alternative hypothesis there is a difference in the proportion of respondents perception about the customer service quality that means the theoretical distribution and actual distributions are different so these are the two hypotheses that we are going to test next is the equation or formula for case test here is the formula for case test here the statistic value of case test is called d that is d value equal to maximum of cfo of x minus cfe of x here cfo means observed cumulative frequency proportion observed cumulative frequency proportion and cfe of x means expected or theoretical cumulative frequency proportion here is a main difference with chi square test in chi square test we are take the exact values of observed and expected but here we are considering 
the observed cumulative frequency proportion. That's the difference between chi-square and case test. Now, we need to make a decision by comparing the D value with the critical value. That is case critical value. Here, the case critical value is called D alpha. We can get this critical value from a case distribution table. So, the D and D alpha. Whether the D value is greater than the D alpha, we are reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we are failed to reject the null hypothesis. Next is the steps to conduct the case test. Here we have six steps. The step one, formulate a null and alternative hypothesis that we have already done. The second, find out the observed and expected proportion of each category that we'll do in Excel later. Third one, compute the observed and expected cumulative proportions. Fourth one, obtain the kolmogorov smirnov D value that we are going to apply the equation that we have already discussed. The fifth step, make the decision by identifying the D critical value or we can say D alpha. The last step, write the reports. Now everything is ready. We need to move to Excel for conducting the case test. Open an Excel file. Here we need to enter two things. First one is the customer ID and second one is their perception about the customer service quality. So provide the first column to customer ID. Second column is customer service quality. Format it, centralize it. Okay. Now, here in this example, I am going to consider 200 as our sample size. So, we need to enter customer ID from 1 to 200. So, easiest way is to fill is that here you can see a fill icon, then select series, then column 1 to 200. Press enter. Now, a 1 to 200 numbers are ready. Now, second one is the second column is customer service quality. We have five scales, one, two, three, four, and five. The first scale is very low, and second is low, and the third is moderate. The fourth one is high, and the last one is very high. So here, the numbers representing their perceptions. Now, we need to enter these numbers in the second column. This is one, two, three, four, five. Here I enter one. That means the first respondent's perception is very low. Then the third one is two. The third respondent's perception is low, like this. So each respondents have their own customer service quality and we record it in a numerical way instead of entering the scale directly in this column. We are represented the scale by numbers. So fill all the column. Be fast. Welcome back. Now all the data are ready. I have handed the response of all the 200 respondents. I hope you entered properly. Now we need to make a table for the calculation. For that purpose we need to understand the equation once more. Here is the equation. The D value. So here we need a table for calculating the parameters of the equation. That is observed cumulative frequency proportion and expected cumulative frequency proportion. For that purpose, the first column, the observed frequency, FO. Yes. Centralize it. Observed frequency, we call it as FO. Now we need to calculate the observed frequency from the second column. That means how many respondents' responses, their service quality is very low, and how many response as low, like this. So we can apply an Excel equation that is count if. So equal to count if this function 
need two arguments first one is range as the range of the response column so select that range yes 1 to 200 comma what we need to count that is one that is very low so we need to freeze that range because all the remaining columns have the same range so freeze that range press f4 yes f4 then close bracket press enter now you can see 30 respondents says that their customer service quality is very low now drag it down to find out other response frequencies now we can see it 13 71 53 28 18 so need to find out the total that should be the sample size 200 sum it up yes the total is 200 now we can see the responses frequency of five scales by the 200 respondents now the second column that is the frequency proportion observed frequency proportion that should be the second column we represent it f o of x yes observed frequency proportion centralize it yes bold it look good now we need to find the proportion out of 200 30 is how much that's a proportion so equal 30 divided by 200 we can freeze the 200 because the proportion of all the remaining frequencies are out of 200 30 divided by 200 freeze that column yes enter we can get 0 0.15 now drag it down and reduce the decimal place to 2 the total should be 1 yes centralize it now we can convert into percentage it should be 100 percentage click here 100 percentage yes proportion should be out of 100 the second column is ready now the third column should be the cumulative observed frequency proportion or observed cumulative frequency proportion c f o of x the last thing so the third column should be c f o of x cumulative observed frequency proportion centralize it bold it now okay now cf of x need to cumulate it means 0 0.15 plus 0 0.3 the first column should be 0 0.15 the second column 0 0.15 plus 0 0.36 so 0 0.15 plus 0 0.36 yes like that enter key then drag it down the third column should be 0 0.51 plus 0 0.27 you can get dragged that equation you will get the result of all the rows now the cumulative observed frequency proportion is ready the first part of equation is ready now we move to the second part expected cumulative frequency proportion first we need to calculate the expected frequency expected frequency f e expected frequency means theoretical frequency that is a normal distribution how much we expect here you look 200 is the total respondents and we ask them to answer in phi scale so definitely the expectation is equal that means each respondents responds equally in all scales that means 200 divided by 5 that is a expectation that is equal to 200 freeze that column then divided by 5 because we have 5 scales so that is our expectation because each and every scales have equal responses that is 40 each that is a theoretical distribution that is a normal distribution now expected frequency is ready you just total it it should be 200 yes now the next column expected frequency proportion that is the next call f e of x expected frequency proportion okay then centralize it now the same way that we are applying at the second column here we can apply equal 40 
divide by 200 freeze that column that's a proportion definitely it is 0 0.2 each same for all the rows centralize it you total it definitely it will be 1 or 100 percentage auto sum 1 so in percentage click the percentage symbol you will get 100 percentage now the expected frequency proportion is ready now we need to move to the last portion that is expected cumulative frequency proportion we can say cumulative expected frequency proportion that is cf e of x that's the next column cumulative expected frequency proportion now it's ready the same way that we are calculated the cumulative observed frequency proportion you can apply the same equation here the first column should be 0 0.02 the second column 0 0.02 plus 0 0.02 so equal 0 0.02 plus 0 0.02 enter key centralize it now drag it down you will get result of remaining rows yes it's a cumulative expected frequency proportion now the two parameters are ready observed frequency cumulative proportion and expected frequency cumulative proportion the last column should be the equation itself cfo of x minus cfe of the last column cfo x minus cfe of x so cfo of x minus cfe of x so find the difference equal CFO of x 0.15 minus 0.2. Press enter, then drag it down, centralize it. So this is the difference. This is the difference of cumulative observed frequency proportion and cumulative expected frequency proportions. Now format this column, give the border. Yes, now it's look good. The tabulation is ready. Now move to the last column. We need to find out the D. That is the maximum of the difference. That means the maximum value of the last column. Here, the maximum value is 0 0.17. That is the D value. Yes. This is a D value. That's a maximum value. That's a KS D value. So finding this D value, we tabulate all these columns. We create this table. Now we need to compare the D value with the critical value. So we need to find out the critical value of KS distribution. Now we need to find out the critical value of KS distribution. Here is the KS distribution table Kolmogorov's Mirnov critical value table we can see the sample size instead of degree of freedom we are considering the sample size here the top you can see the level of significance 0 0.2 0 0.15 0 0.1 0 0.05 the 0.05 is the default level of significance that we are going to check it out here the sample size is 35 up to 35 you can get the value if the sample size is over 35 we need to apply the equation that you can see in the column. So our sample size is above 35. So the level of significance is 0 0.05. And the sample size over 35. Here we need to solve by applying this equation. You will get the critical value. That is, here is the equation. That is 1.36 divided by root n root n means n means the number of sample or the sample size so we can apply the equation equal 1.36 divided by square root sqrt an excel equation excel function an excel function is there sqrt of 200 yes one argument 
the square root number here is the sample size 200 that is the capital N then close the bracket press enter here is the critical value reduce the decimal place by 2 0 0.096 this is the d alpha or the case critical value now we have both the values the case d value and d alpha the d alpha is 0 0.096 and d is 0 0.17 now the process of calculation is over we have calculated the case d value and we extract the d alpha from the case distribution now d alpha is 0 0.096 and our case d value is 0 0.17 now we move to check whether we reject the null hypothesis or fails to reject the null hypothesis now we need to test the hypothesis here is the rule for the hypothesis testing if the d value that is the KS test statistic is greater than D alpha. D alpha is the KS critical value. We reject the null hypothesis. Else, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Here, our KS test statistic, that is a D value, is 0 0.17. And our KS critical value, the D alpha that we are extracted from the KS distribution table, is 0 0.096. So, it's obvious that the D value is greater than the D alpha. So, here we reject the null hypothesis. Now, we move to how we can report this result for a research paper. Now, this is the reporting style. Since the calculated D value of 0 0.17 is greater than the critical d value of 0 0.096 the null hypothesis of no difference among the respondents perception about the customer service quality is rejected it is evident that there is a significant difference among respondents perception of customer service quality of the bank this is a style of reporting for your research paper now our topic is over i hope you enjoy this video thank you for watching please hit the subscribe and like button and share this video it is really motivates me to make more video for you so don't forget to subscribe my channel here in the description section below I have already given some important resource links please go through that it will definitely help for you thank you for watching see you again